There you go. You got him? You hooked him? All right, lift your tip up. That a girl, that a girl, rid him up. Oh, he's a big one. All right, get the left for him. Grandpa, look what I caught. State your name for the record. Michael Raymond Trescott. Mr. Trescott, would you agree that as the driver of the vessel, you're responsible for a safe operation? Yes. So would you please explain to the court how, on a perfectly clear day, you managed to run down a small fishing vessel with two people aboard? I can't, I can't explain, 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 explain it. Mikey! It. Oh, now that is a manly man boat. Uh, right? Whoa! Close. Man overboard. Boat fuel. How many of these have you got already? Wire me the white whale. It was a perfect day, and what seemed like a perfect plan. For Jen, Danny, and Michael, Life jacket. the plan was just to have yeah. fun. Does it take the jerk to inflate? Well, I got it. <laughs> Some sightseeing, a little fishing, maybe a swim. Here we go. You could say they didn't plan on anything out of the ordinary. But sometimes, ordinary behaviors and everyday circumstances combine in unexpected, even tragic ways. Mr. Trescott, you testified that you left the dock around 9 a.m. The police report has the collision occurring just before 6 p.m. That's nine hours on the water. Have you ever heard of the environmental stressors? No, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Spending the day outside in bright light and fresh air feels great. It stimulates your senses for a while. In limited amounts, that glorious sunshine is good for you. It supplies the energy to produce vitamin D, essential for strong bones. But too much exposure, around the water you get a double dose, directly from above and bounced off the water. Too much exposure, and the body starts fighting off the sun's damaging radiation. Over time, this takes a toll on your energy level. You know, that run-down feeling you get after a long day in the sun. What's more, that same sun reflects off the water, making it difficult to see detail, contrast, and color. Polarized glasses help, but it's still hard to see objects in the glare and it tires you out trying. When you're around water, fatigue can creep up on you in a surprising number of ways. So, much of the day you were traveling at what? 20, 25 miles an hour? About that. I was not going too fast. I didn't say that you were, but the boat was bouncing through the water as boats do, right? Yeah, I guess. All right. A boat on water is in constant motion. Just ask anyone who's ever been seasick. Whether you're aware of it or not, you're exercising your muscles continuously just to maintain balance. All that exercise burns up energy. The greater the motion and the longer you're out there, the more tired you get. Mr. Trescott, was it noisy on the boat when you were underway? Not particularly. Were you able to speak to each other in a normal tone of voice? Noise causes fatigue too. The engine, the pounding of waves, even the wind over time can make you tired. Michael! Yo, Michael, you want some water? You want some water? So how much water did you drink while you were boating? Remember, Mr. Trescott, you're under oath. Did you drink any water? Maybe not. Could you, in fact, have been dehydrated? I don't know. I felt fine. I felt fine. I felt fine. Danny, I'm oh, never going to catch on, anything. Danny. It's so hot. When it's hot, it's easy to become dehydrated. That's because in order to stay cool, your body sweats. That's a good thing. The moisture evaporating off your skin carries away heat, but it also carries away fluids. It's not uncommon for your body to lose several quarts of water over the course of a hot day. 
If you lose more fluids than you replace, you get dehydrated. And dehydration is another cause of fatigue. Let's see, Mr. Trescott. For much of the day, you were subjected to the hot sun, the glare off the water, the motion and the noise from the boat. And it's likely that you were dehydrated. That's a big strain on your body, wouldn't you agree? Sometimes boating is like that. There's nothing wrong with being out in the sunshine and fresh air. It's, it's not, not a crime, crime to get tired. Michael's right. A hot sun, glare, motion, wind and noise, and dehydration are part of the boating experience. These are the environmental stressors. Individually, they're like a stress or a tax on the body, but in combination, over the course of a hot day on the water, they produce fatigue. And when you're tired, you're not as alert. Now, there's not much you can do about the wind or the heat or the motion, but Michael chose to do something that made things much, much worse. Jan, will you give me another drink? <laughs> no. Jan, 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 the man has been working hard, huh? Hey, Amen. <laughs> I've only had one. If I give you this, I have to drive the boat. <laughs> no. <laughs> Baby, this is a precision machine that requires a master. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But I'm watching you, okay? <laughs> Did you have alcoholic beverages on board? Just a six pack of beer. Just one? Yeah. We're not big drinkers. We just like to be in a boat on the water. How many beers did you drink? Two, maybe three. I'm not even sure I finished the last one. The officer on the scene measured your blood alcohol level. In the eyes of the Lord, Mr. Trescott, you were impaired. I don't see how that's possible. I only had two beers. Are you aware that the effects of alcohol can dramatically increase when, when the, the drinker is dehydrated. When the drinker is dehydrated. 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 If you're tired and dehydrated, just a couple of beers can have the same effect on you as if you'd had several more. That's because your liver, which cleanses the blood of toxins like alcohol, needs energy and water to work efficiently. Fatigue robs you of that energy, and dehydration reduces the available water. What's worse, alcohol is a diuretic, so you retain less of the fluids you do drink, producing even more dehydration. The result of all this can be a downward spiral that intensifies the dangerous effects of alcohol in your body. And these are particularly dangerous effects for boaters. To begin with, alcohol affects balance. You could also experience serious impairment of vision, including losing some of your peripheral vision, having difficulty focusing and following multiple objects, trouble distinguishing low contrast objects, and a compromised ability to tell red from green. On top of all this, your reaction time slows. When danger appears, it will take you longer to respond. And finally, judgment. Your ability to make the correct decision and take the correct action is impaired. And when a passenger drinks, that's one less set of alert eyes, one less person to relieve the driver, and one less person to look out for their own safety. Trescott. You've been driving the boat in the sun, the wind, the glare, and the noise for much of the day. Certainly you were tired. Most likely you were dehydrated. And on top of that, you drank several beers, the effects of which combined with these same environmental stressors to impair your ability to operate that boat. Do you really think you should have been driving that boat? Answer the question, Mr. Trescott. Do you really think you should have been driving that boat?